Some wandered in desert wastelands, finding no way to a city where they could sell. They were hungry and thirsty, and their lives ebbed away. Some sat in darkness, in utter darkness, prisoners suffering in iron change, because they rebelled against God's commands and despised the plans of the Most High. So he subjected them to bitter labor. They stumbled, and there was no one there to help. Some became fools through their rebellious ways, and suffered affliction because of their iniquities. They loathed all food and drew near the gates of death. Some went out of the sea in ships. They were merchants on the mighty waters. They saw the works of the Lord, his wonderful deeds in the deep. For he spoke and stirred up a tempest. They lift high the waves. They mounted up to the heavens and went down to the depths. In their peril, their courage melted away. They reeled and staggered like drunkards. They were at their wits' end. Then, then they, they cried out, out to the Lord in their, their trouble, and, and he delivered them from, from their distress. He led them by a straight way to a city where they could settle. He brought them out of darkness, the utter darkness, and broke away their chains. He sent out his word and healed them. He rescued them from the grave. He stilled the storm to a whisper. The waves of the sea were hushed. They were glad when it grew calm and he guided them to their desired haven. Let, Let them give thanks, thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love, love and, and his, his wonderful deeds for humankind. For he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. Let, Let them give, give thanks, thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love, love and his wonderful deeds for humankind. For he breaks down the gates of bronze and he cuts through the bars of iron. Let, Let him give thanks, thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love, love and, and his wonderful deeds of humankind. Let them sacrifice thank offerings and tell of his works with songs of joy. Let him give, give thanks, thanks to the Lord for his unfailing, unfailing love, love and his wonderful deeds of humankind. humankind. Let him exalt him in the assembly of the people and praise him in the council of the elders. The theme of this psalm that we just heard is stated in the first verse. <clears throat> Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. God's goodness and God's love. And that theme, it shows up in four stories. And each of the four stories follows the same pattern that has four parts. Somebody who was in trouble. They prayed, God saved them, and then it says, let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love. The first trouble, says a person who wandered in a desert wasteland, had no, found no way to a city where they could settle. They were hungry and thirsty, their lives ebbed away. Somebody who was lost and alone, and these situations of trouble, they can be literally true, but they can also stand for another situation. So maybe you never did wander in a desert wasteland, but you know how that would feel because your life has felt alone. Or the next situation, they were prisoners suffering in iron chains there are people who are literally chained up. There are others who have the sense of being trapped, of being locked in chains. The third one, and this is a little difficult for me personally, is about sickness and drawing close to death. And some of us have experienced that ourselves. And the fourth situation, People who went out on the sea as merchants in ships and they confronted a great storm and their lives were in danger because of the storm. Four situations of trouble gives us four examples of the difficulty of life. Life sometimes can be a mess, sometimes it can be miserable. So what did they do? They cried out to the Lord. 
in their trouble. That's repeated four times. Each of these four situations, it says, they cried out to the Lord in their trouble. This is a great prayer to pray. Help. God, I need your help. Save me. There are times when people pray that prayer, but with such heart in it, such desperation. God, save me. Help me. I'm at my end. This sums up so many of our prayers, doesn't it? God, I'm reaching out to you. Come and save me. I should say, there are many of the Psalms and many other prayers in the Bible that are much more extensive, but they can be summed up just that. They called out to the Lord. They cried out to the Lord. And he delivered them from their distress. All four, he led them by a straight way to a city where they could settle. He brought them out of darkness and the deepest gloom and broke away their chains. He sent forth his word and healed them. He rescued them from the grave. He stilled the storm to a whisper. The waves of the sea were hushed. You might notice, if you've read through the Gospels, the accounts of the life of Jesus, there was a time when Jesus was on a boat and his disciples were terrified that their life was going to end because of this great storm that came up. And Jesus is meanwhile asleep in the back of the ship. And they wake him up and they say, don't you care? We're going to drown. We're going to die. And Jesus speaks a word to the storm itself. Peace. Be still. And... He stilled the storm to a whisper. The waves of the sea were hushed. All four of these ways of being saved we see in Jesus Christ. Although the psalm was written hundreds of years before, Jesus leads us by a straight way to a city where we can settle. There's several places in the Bible where it says that people are seeking a homeland seeking a place where they can settle, where they can put down roots. And nowhere on earth feels quite right because our home is in heaven. Our home is in this eternal city of God. And Jesus is the one who leads us there. He brought them out of darkness and the deepest gloom and broke away their chains. Jesus set people free. He healed people by his word and rescued them from the grave. And all of us, eventually, will still die from one of these four ways or some other. And Jesus will still rescue us from the grave by raising us from the dead. Trouble and prayer and salvation is our story. We call out to God, and He saves us. So, this is true. The psalm began by saying, Thank God for His unfailing love and His goodness. This is true, and the Bible teaches us that God is love. That's who God is. And it never changes. Our life, though, is difficult, it is messy, and sometimes it is just miserable. When God's, we, but this is who God is, God is love, God is good, so we can expect in our life to experience God's love. There are specific examples that we can give of God's love shown to us. And when we experience God's love in our difficult, messy, miserable lives, lives it is called redemption. So the psalm began by saying, let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for humankind. Give thanks because this is what God does. And it said, let those who have been redeemed speak out, tell their story. Because this is, the, this is what God does. God is love. And we experience his love in our lives. We end up in difficult situations. And God shows his goodness. So let them give thanks, as repeated four times. That really is the theme of the psalm, our response to God's love for us is to say, 
thank you, to give thanks. So it says, uh, this is four different ways, including a couple of in Dutch. Uh, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Those who have experienced God's love and salvation should say so. They should speak up. They should share their story. They should give thanks. And you can see how my Dutch is. So spreken zij die door de Heer zijn verlost. How's that? Good. Dirk? Good. Ah, so speak those who have been redeemed by the Lord. Say the same thing. They should say so. They should speak out. And the last one, let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. You have a story. Each of you have a story of what God has done in your life, how he has redeemed you, how he is redeeming you. However, you may not be able to put it yet in the past tense and say, God, I called out to the Lord and he redeemed me, he saved me. You might be calling out right now. And that's your, play, your stage in the story. You're in trouble. You're crying out to the Lord. There's some people who are just sensing there is some trouble and they need to cry out to the Lord. People are at a different place, each one. But many of us, we would say, I have been redeemed. I called on the Lord and he answered me. You should all have a paper in your hand, a colored paper. And hopefully you have a pen. If you don't have one, I hope you can find one. What I would like you to do is just draw a line down the middle of it like you see here. You choose which direction, but uh, I made mine horizontal, right? Landscape orientation. Put a line right down the middle of that page, and I'm going to have you write some things on here. Above that line, write one word or one short phrase that describes who you were before. Who you were before you called out to God and He redeemed you, rescued you, saved you. And below that line, the person that you are becoming now. This is what I wrote for myself. Oh, I already went forward. I didn't realize. He did it. Ah, okay. I said before I was full of myself. And I did realize this was a problem. And I said, God save me. God help me. And now I would say I'm full of Christ. And then I started thinking, but there's a lot of other words that I can include in there what it meant to be full of myself. Well, I was selfish. I was proud. I was also insecure. That, that was a part of the whole thing. And I asked God, change me, save me. Make this different. For you, what word or two or three would you put in to say, this is who I used to be? It could be some situation. Maybe you were out at sea in a storm and you called out to God and he calmed the storm some specific situation. Who were you before? Who are you now? And now, if you've done that, and if you don't have anything exact, to, anything specific to write, that's okay. Your story may be in a different place, but this is a good reminder to us of what God has done and how we can give thanks to Him. On that line, I wrote some things, some people, some places, some, some events that were important in my spiritual growth. I went to a youth camp when I was 15 years old and God took hold of me there. Jeff and Dan were some youth pastors at Eastside Church. Jerry and Roger were professors. Grant and Steve were friends from Whitworth University where God shaped me, where God called me. This woman named Heather who was part of Trinity Church in Alaska was influential. God used her to bring healing to me. And Brydon is a friend from Honduras, and Randy's a pastor of Silver Lake Church, and Brad is a good friend of mine, and I'm also grateful for AIPC, which is also now has an important part in my spiritual life. So write down, if you would, the people, the places, the events that helped shape your spiritual life and helped you become the person that you are now. Then I have more things that I remember about God, and not just that God is good, but specific ways I've experienced God's goodness. He took hold of my life when I was 15, 
God guided me to the right university. I was just telling somebody the story yesterday. My plan was to go to the best, most prestigious uh, university I could and become a scientist and kind of look down on everybody else who wasn't as smart as I was. But I knew enough that I should pray, and I asked God, what school should I go to? And I'm flipping through things from uh, universities that I received in the mail, and I got to the one that said Whitworth, and although I didn't know anything about it, I knew, without a doubt, that is where I'm going. God spoke to me, and I will be always grateful, because there I found professors who became mentors, there I found the woman who is now my wife, there I made friends. God guided me there. Maybe you remember something, how God worked in your life. A dream, a vision, a healing, a person, an event. God called me to ministry. He taught me to depend on his love. And I'm so grateful for the promise of the resurrection. People say, according to studies, there are benefits of being a grateful person. There are benefits of gratitude. The psalm is saying, thank God, be grateful, be thankful. And there are actual benefits in our life that people in, who are grateful are happier, they're more content, and they're more resilient, meaning they respond better when tragedies happen, because they do happen. According to studies of people, um, you've heard, this was brought up at a, a, a leadership conference yesterday, you've heard of post-traumatic stress. Somebody said, you may never have heard of post-traumatic growth. That people often grow after coming through some trauma or some tragedy. And according to studies, people who are already more grateful are able to be more resilient. They find that they are able to grow afterwards. Does this eliminate the difficult things? Does this get rid of the sadness in life? Of course not. But it creates a bit, some, something of a balance. So when our son Peter was in the hospital with cancer, we were crying every day. We were worried every day. We were stressed every day. But also every day, we were thanking God that there was a hospital where our son could get medical care. Every day, we were thanking God that we had family and friends who were expressing their love. And when our son died, we were deep in grief, and we still are. And we are also thanking God that we had our son for 11 years. There is tragedy and sorrow. At the same time, there is gratitude. And this creates the kind of balance. This is how we ex experience God's love in our lives in the midst of tragedies, in the midst of trauma. God is still faithful. God is still good. I also, this is not according to studies, but I believe this is true, that when we are grateful and express gratitude, it brings us closer to the other people. When somebody says, thank you so much for what you've done for me, does that not open your heart up to them? There was a young man who felt some distance between him and, him and his father, and he decided one day to sit down with his dad and just tell him. They're on a golf course, but they sat down on a bench, and he just began to tell his dad, thank you for all the things that he had done. And he listed out, Dad, thank you for this. Thank you for the way you did this. Thank you for that. And they ended up with this hour and a half conversation for good about golf. And they were brought into this closer relationship than they'd ever experienced before. And so when we express our thanks to God, it opens up our hearts to Him as we are reminding ourselves of who God is and what He has done for us. The key to gratitude is then not just to invent or come up with some feelings and try to feel grateful. The key to gratitude is to just is simply this, to recognize reality. Everything under heaven belongs to me, God says in the book of Job. And also in Psalm 24, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all its people belong to him. So all that we have is a gift from God. 
What single thing do you have that does not come from God? So all of life is a gift. So with every part of life we can say, thank you, God. Right, now that we're beginning to go here, you have your sheet and hopefully you've written down some words and some things about God. Would you add in some things? Think about your family. What are you grateful for? What do you appreciate about your family? I'm glad that I had parents who were patient. I'm glad that I have a wife whose love is sacrificial. I'm very grateful for four children. What do you have about your family that you would like to say? Thanks for this. This was a gift. It doesn't eliminate the difficulties you've had with your family, but what are the positives that you would like to say thank you for? And then I was thinking, okay, there's some things that I'm grateful for about this country that I've just arrived at, and there are things that I'm grateful for for the country that I came from. And now almost all of us were born in some other country besides Belgium. Some of you were born here. What are you grateful for? What are you thankful for about the country that you came from? What about the culture? What about the people? What about the place? Write down a few things. Now, here we go. Um, my hope is that um, if you've ever seen this old-fashioned kind of pump, you first push down on it, it's to get water out. You have to prime the pump. I mean, you've got to start pumping because that water is down deep and it's got to get up to the surface. You've got to pump a few times before the water comes but once it comes it just gushes out it just starts to pour out and if you think first about your story your experience of God's salvation and you begin to think God thank you the ways God has guided you through life thank you the experiences you've had in the midst of difficulty and God was there thank you God and then you begin to think about your family, you begin to think about uh, the country you came from, all these sort of things. And my hope is that now the pump is primed and you find you have other things coming to mind that you are thankful for and you would like to say thanks. So everything else you can think of, add on there. I am genuinely thankful for bread, for cheese, for avocados, for pears. I'm thankful for food and the flavor of it, aren't you? Isn't that an amazing thing that we have been built with a, a, a way to experience food? I'm grateful for hot showers, for comfortable clothes. Write down these things. What are you thankful for? Don't write down my list. Write down your list. I'm thankful for sunshine and for clouds. I'm thankful for beauty and art and music, for conversation, for colors, for sleep. To what is it that you would like to say thank you to God for? Add them to your paper. There are ways of saying thank you, and there are also ways of living out thank you. The way of saying thanks to God for food is to say it, right? God, thank you for this food. But it also is a way of saying thanks by not eating too much. And if you have more than you need, it's a way of saying thank you by sharing it with others. And the same with relationships. We say thank you to people who are kind to us, and we live it out by also showing kindness and forgiveness and love. This is a way of using God's gifts the right way. God has given us so many gifts. When we use it the right way, as a way of saying thanks also. Same with sex, by saying thank you to God for this gift he's given us. And we also, by keeping it within the, the way it was designed by God, is a way of living out our thanks. And saying thanks for money, well, we live out our thanks by giving freely and generously to people who are in need. For the ability to communicate, which we don't think about very often, but it is quite a gift that we have been given, that we are not isolated, we can talk with others, we can communicate. And we live that out by speaking in a way that builds other people up. These are all ways of saying thanks or living out our thanks to God. So then back to Psalm 107. Let them sacrifice thank offerings and tell of his works with songs of joy. There are times when you just want to sing. Some of you sing in the shower. Some of you sing while you're making dinner. Some of you sing while you're driving. 
sometimes it just flows out from within you. God, thank you. And it's a natural response to God's goodness. Let them exalt him in the assembly of the people and praise him in the council of the elders. It comes back to what it said at the beginning. Let those who have experienced God's redemption, his goodness and love, let them say so. Let them tell their story. When you hear my story, you may be encouraged. When I hear your story, I am encouraged. I've got a hundred or so different stories right here in this room. All of them really still being written. But we can look back and say, this is what God has done for me. We have this practice every week in our church of praying prayers of thanks and praise to God. This week I saved it till now. Because my hope is that the pump has been primed and you've got some things that you're ready to say thank you for. So I want to invite you to stand. And invite you to lift up your voice and give God thanks. As usual, you can do this when whatever language is most comfortable for you. And one after the other, who has many people as wish, you can say a short prayer of thanks to God for anything that you would like to say thank you for. Let's pray.